to it. We're following some breaking news just into the WDSU newsroom. The signatures collected in the effort to recall Mayor Latoya Cantrell fell short. Let's go straight to WDSU reporter Morgan Lentis, who is live at the Capitol with the details. Morgan, you were the only New Orleans reporter there when the signatures were being delivered to the governor's office. What can you tell us? Yeah, so Daryl, this is news that really just broke to us from the governor's office, releasing that statement a few minutes before coming on air. And I want to look down to make sure I have the correct number for you. They tell us in that statement, the recall organizers only secured 27,243 valid signatures. That is obviously well short of the 44,900 they needed to secure in order to trigger that special election in an effort to recall New Orleans Mayor Latoya Cantrell. You mentioned we were here exclusively this morning as those boxes were brought in. Let's go ahead and show you that video. You can see WDSU here as eight large boxes of uh, signatures were wheeled into the governor's office earlier today. We have now learned the Registrar of Voters Office turned over 67,022 handwritten signatures in total, which they collected from recall organizers. The problem, according to that release from the governor's office, only a little more than 27,000 were, quote, qualified electors. The other 39,805 signatures were not, meaning more than half of all the signatures they collected were invalid and could not be counted toward that total threshold. Now, I spoke with a recall expert earlier today who says it's not uncommon for thousands of signatures to be thrown out, so to say, uh, during an effort like this. The question now, of course, is will recall organizers accept this news? or will they sue? Obviously, that remains to be seen. We have at WDSU been reaching out to recall organizers to see their reaction, what they plan to do after this news has come out. Right now, we don't have an answer for you, but of course, we will be keeping you updated. But it just speaks to the fact that this has been a really long process, this campaign to try to recall the mayor. And seemingly at this hour, it seems like it has failed. Daryl, back to you. All right, Morgan, thank you so much. And we're now joined by anchor Travers Mackle, who's been staying on top of the story. Travers, we received this news about, what, 15, 20 minutes yeah. ago. 27,000 signatures fell w way short of the 49,900 that was required. Yeah, we just talked to a legal analyst who has followed this very closely. And to put it simply, he says it's all over but the crying. That 27,000 signatures is not even close to the 44,900 needed. So therefore, he says, in his opinion, he thinks everybody packs up shop and goes home. So therefore, we will see if that is the case. Obviously, we are waiting to hear from Eileen Carter and the recall organizers right now to see what course of action they plan to take. As Morgan just pointed out, more than 39 signatures, for lack of a better term, Daryl, we're disqualified. 39,000. 39,000, yeah, excuse yeah, me. Absolutely. We don't know why. Was it no witness, uh, bad address? Do they live in Jefferson or Plaquemines or St. Bernard? Um, obviously, a lot of questions to that. But bottom line, according to the legal analyst we just spoke to before coming out here, in his opinion, it is uh, time for everybody to fold up their tents and head home because they didn't even come close to making the number of 44,900. Yeah, Travers, it's going to be interesting to see exactly what folks like Eileen Carter and those have yeah. to say about this because 27,000 signatures, that's that's definitely not what they expected, I'm sure. No. Especially uh, since they said the registrar's office said they counted these twice. Right, they did count them twice. Obviously, this is something that they took very seriously. I think the big question at this point is, recall organizers turned in 67,000. They did it in two waves, which is very interesting. They turned them in when they had to back on February 22nd, which was Ash Wednesday. But then they turned in a second batch at the end of what's called the five-day grace period. It'll be interesting to see if, if any of those were kicked out. Obviously, the big question for recall organizers will be how and why 39,000 signatures were removed. Obviously, the Registrar of Voters, in her opinion, did a thorough canvassing. She counted them twice. The governor has now signed off on this. In his opinion, per that statement, there's not going to be a special election. This is just going to essentially go away. You would imagine also, speaking with that legal analyst, that the, the mayor's lawsuits against reducing the threshold from 49,000 to 44,000, that just goes away because it's pretty much moot right now, Daryl, because there's going to be no special election because 44,900 signatures were not collected. A few months ago, during this very same time on WDSU News at noon, Travers, you broke the news that they went to the Secretary of State's right. office to file uh, for a recall against Mayor Latoya K. Trail. Fast forward to a few months later, it appears 
this may be over. Yeah, it does appear this may be over. To point this out too, we have reached out to the mayor's office for a comment. They have not yet gotten back to us on this, but we will have much more and extended coverage today. Uh, Eileen Carter actually just called us, so we're going to call her back, and we may have a live update yeah, I was about to say, coming up in just a few moments yeah, we because we do want to hear from her what they plan on doing. Is this it for recall organizers? You know, Rick Farrell, the, the businessman, has sunk about a million dollars into this. They've taken in some smaller donations, but I think everybody wants to know, is this really it, or do they try to litigate their way to victory, for lack of a better Yeah, term. she literally called Travers just a yeah. couple of minutes ago yeah, to so, definitely see right. what she has to say. All Travers right. Mackle with the latest. Travers, thank you so much. And joining us now to talk more about this is Mr. Spivak. Mr. Joshua Spivak, thank you so much for joining us. First of all, I want to get your reaction to the news that they fell short with 27,000 signatures. And that, uh, this is an enormous uh, miss, usually 20%. I've seen 40%. I can't think of a time where it's been that many missed signatures. So I'm wondering if something is up, uh, specifically the issue of the, this time frame, this extra time frame when they handed it in. Could those have all been rejected? That may be the issue, uh, in which case perhaps they have a colorable a lawsuit. Whether it would succeed or not is, is another story, but that would be really where I would imagine a problem would be. Otherwise, it's it's just an enormous uh, mess in terms of how many signatures were failed and, and rejected. Uh, it's really much higher than anything I've seen in, in another, in any recall of a major official. Now, Mr. Spivak, our very own anchor, Travers Mackle, he's actually about to be on the phone in a minute with Eileen Carter, the folks uh, for the recall campaign. Um, do you see a point or an instance where they might try to fight this back, or do you believe that this could very well be over? This could very well be over. I mean, usually that is the end. Uh, I think, again, the, the question is, why were those signatures rejected? And especially if it was due to this extra time frame, Maybe there's some claim, you know, that the law seems pretty clear, but perhaps there is an argument to be made that they shouldn't be rejected for that. Uh, so it, it really would be very interesting to see why, as opposed to just uh, that they were rejected. And that would be what we'd have to find out, because usually th this is the end. If the, they don't have the signatures, that's it. But they also, it's usually nowhere near this type of rejection rate. Now, since this has went down, do you believe that we could very well see at some point the release of who actually signed this recall? Or do you believe that that just doesn't matter now at this point? I, I don't know that that's allowed under the law. You know, I'm, I'm not sure exactly how it works. Uh, I saw that there was a lot of debate. Some states have it where you automatically release the information. Some states have it where you're not allowed to release it, say California. So. Uh, you know, when that does get out there in, in Wisconsin, we saw judges lose races because they signed the petition uh, to recall Governor Scott Walker. So it would be interesting, but I don't know that that's uh, that's allowed under the law. If you're looking at the Mayor Latoya Cantrell camp right now, you probably believe they're thrilled at the news that was broken earlier today, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. This is yeah, it's not so great for her to face a recall. There are some benefits potentially, but especially in, in this situation, she would rather have avoided this. And, and in fact, it actually gives her a good look because of this uh, huge rejection rate that this was what she would portray, uh, presumably as, as it, an illegitimate effort to remove her. And they don't look so good because they didn't get enough signatures and they, they really missed by a lot. Joshua Spivak, as always, you've been helping us really break down exactly what this recall could mean if things did go into fruition and what it is as of right now. Really appreciate your time and expertise as always. Thank you so much, sir. Thanks very much. Yes, sir. And make sure you stick with WDSC throughout the day as we continue to follow this story. You can also download the free WDSC mobile app for your iPhone or Android devices.